Hello everyone and welcome to questions and answers based on the course of computational finance. Today we have question number 19 that is based on materials covered in lecture number 8. The question of today is as follows. What to do if the FFT or cost method does not converge for increasing expansion terms? So this is one of the most frustrating things when dealing with uh, Fourier based methods is that when once you implement the method you implement the pricing tools and then you want to evaluate this function, uh, it doesn't converge. Or even worse, it may basically give you results that are completely off limit. So for example, if you have a graph, uh, this is, let's say, strike. Here we have a call option, call price. Then you know the call price should converge and this should behave in this way. However, if you have a bug in your code or something wrong, goes wrong with the, uh, with the method of the convergence, you may actually get something like this. So and this is very frustrating. Uh, or for example, you may also get prices that becoming negative. This is one of the biggest issues with dealing with the Fourier method. If something is, if, if you didn't put enough attention to a particular aspect of the implementation, like for example, integration domain under the Fourier space, then the results can be completely bad and it will be very difficult for you to find out uh, what is the reason for that. So in this question, I will try to give you some hints uh, about what to look at, where the problem could be in your method, or what type of parameters you should change, such that the integration and the pricing uh, should converge, or at least should give you indication where is the problem. So here we have uh, two, uh, I have prepared, let's say, as a starting point, I have prepared two experiments. The first one on left hand side, we have a recovery of a, a normal a PDF, probability density function, uh, based on the cost method. So you can see how this behaves depending on number of uh, terms. So here we have a normal 0, 1, 0, 1. So you see that for number of terms 4, uh, this is, doesn't really resemble the normal PDF. If we increase number of terms, for example, we have this number of 8, then it becomes indeed nice shape of a density. However, you see there is a big issue that probability density function becomes negative. Once we increase number of terms, this indeed is, uh, is fixed. And in the case of 32 points, we have a very nice convergence. However, in practice, especially if your density is very peaked, so it's not smooth as the one for, uh, uh, for normal distribution, but it's very peaked, something strange happens there. For example, there could be accumulation around one point, like in the CIR type of dynamics. Then by increasing of number of terms, you will see that the results, they don't really uh, convert. The, res the, the results are not getting better. Here for normal distribution, 32 terms is already sufficient, but it could be a case that you have thousands of points and still the results are not good. This suggests that some other settings of your method, they are not properly chosen and then those need to be uh, re-examined. On the right hand side, so here we have normal distribution, here we have log normal distribution. So this is already, you can see the distribution, uh, the density is uh, it's different, however, it is the same family of, uh, uh, of distributions. So here for 16 number of terms, we see that the convergence is not there. So you see how, con how much difference uh, is between normal and log normal. Of course, the problem here is that this density, it is only defined on a positive axis. So there is more terms needed to get proper convergence. If we have 64, then you see the results are really, really bad. Yeah? So it's a lot of oscillations and there is a uh, Actually, you can think maybe it won't even converge. But once we increase twice, increase uh, by 64, so twice number of, uh, of terms, then we get nice convergence. So indeed, you see that this already illustrates you the, the problem that sometimes you, indeed, you, the easiest choice is to increase number of points. But if the number of points is really big, let's say a few thousand, and you still get zigzags, so oscillations, this means that something is wrong and you have to find other, uh, a fix for that. So to give you a little bit of, uh, of course, in Fourier space, we always deal with characteristic functions. And uh, not many people actually look what is the characteristic function. How does it look like? Because we have this Fourier domain. So it's maybe difficult to imagine how this function looks like. But however, it is, also, it is actually possible to plot this uh, characteristic function. And that the illustration of the, of the characteristic function should also tell you something about your integration uh, ranges and possible choices of your integration that you may need to modify. So here we start with a characteristic function for the uh, for Black-Scholes model, so geometric brown motion. This is given explicitly, and this is the uh, the plot. 
So here what I did is I have chosen a domain for you. So this is for Fourier domain for correctly function. And then we have two axes, the real part and imaginary part. And you can see that the blue line illustrates the characteristic function. This is this, this function here. So you see this kind of oscillatory, it's like a, a spiral, it goes, converges uh, to this zero point. So this is also here, this, it's mapped here. We have a real and imaginary part here. So you see kind of spinning and then goes towards the middle point zero, which is zero here. So what it tells us also is that the most action, most information for this currency function, it is until, let's say, this point here. If we expand the space for Fourier space, then there is not so much information left needed that we can contribute. So we should, if we choose Fourier domain, this means that we should only focus mainly on this integration over this point, let's say up to point uh, 30, let's say 35, and then this is the limit. However, you see, in the, often in the, in the integrations with Fourier-based methods, you don't have explicitly, you can choose this limit, but we never, uh, hardly ever look at the, what, what is the shape of the Cauchy function. So this is one of the hints that you can, uh, you can take a look at, plot Cauchy function and see whether maybe your Fourier domain is not uh, sufficiently large. Or for example, it goes up to hundreds. However, the information is only in the beginning, this means that you have, uh, because of the discretization, you have a fewer points here. So sometimes it is bet better to have a smaller domain, however, only concentrated domain on the part which is relevant for pricing. Okay, so what are the possibilities where to search and what are the tricks to find out what is happening with your implementation? The first, if we consider the cost method, you can always take advantage of the so-called cumulants. Uh, cumulants, that those are the uh, related to moments. Those are the parameters that you, if you derive based on the currency function, you can reuse them. And we have a, a closed form formula and also given in the lecture, but also in the book about how to find, how to apply this formula uh, for finding the proper integration range. As you remember in the cost method, we have uh, parameters L, A and B. So in a heuristic sense, so let me go here. In heuristic sense, uh, we have A and B given as interval and we have minus l squared of expiry of our option and then on the other side we have as l squared of time so in order to find a and b we kind of uh, choose l multiplier and then we multiply with a square root of the expiry and that gives us range a and b however this range a and b can be also calculated based on the cumulants so if we have characteristic function we find proper derivatives, we can find those cumulants, and those cumulants can be used to find this interval. And of course, uh, only downside of uh, using cumulants is that those are kind of uh, uh, a little bit involved. So you have to differentiate your characteristic function, and this characteristic function then becomes a little bit of, a, uh, uh, can be a bit messy in terms of number of terms. So it's a little bit of hard work, but you have to do it only once, because characteristic function does not change. I mean, parameters may change, but cumulants will be always given explicitly in terms of model parameters, then you can reuse them to find this integration range. Also, what you could do, you can uh, um, change these parameters essentially by hand. So L, in practice, we would have, let's say, given as 10. But sometimes you can just change this multiplier, for example, to 8, 7. And if the distribution is very big, I have uh, learned already from experience, this L may be very small, for example, half. Or two. So you see that we have this parameter, free parameter that you need to play with to find this integration range. But however, you can also uh, calculate it based on cumulants. But this is a, this requires a little bit of work. There is also an, uh, an article about uh, how to choose this truncation range. This is a recent article. Um, this is given here, uh, where uh, interesting approach is taken how to find those uh, integration uh, points. And of course. In a, from the other perspective, if we don't move from cost method to Fourier, uh, fast Fourier transform, so so-called the Karmadan method, then we can also change the um, we can change um, the integration. So you maybe you remember in the, um, in the, in the method we have so-called C uh, U max or we call it sorry U max, which determines the upper bound for the Fourier space. And this is actually related to this point here. So by playing with this uh, integration, 
the upper limit, we can also improve the convergence in the Karmadan method because then we would have uh, uh, only the integration would take place in the domain of interest. On the other hand, you can also change, uh, deal with the so-called dumping factor, which is a parameter in the FFT method, in the Karmadan method. And this dumping factor is always chosen depending on the characteristic function. So some, for some characteristic functions like Heston model, we have a 75 or 0, 75. But for some other models, this dumping factor can be different. And then choosing proper choice of this parameter may affect your pricing results. There is also, uh, if you, for example, you play with those parameters and still there is a, a problem with your evaluation, uh, then this may also suggest that you have a problem with your implementation. Maybe there is a bug in your characteristic function. Maybe the, the convergence doesn't, the problem of convergence is not because of the Fourier transformation, but basically you have a bug in your currency function. So what kind of sanity checks can you do? So uh, I always think of, okay, let, if we have a call option, you can always think of a, a call option with strike zero. Then we know, for example, then we know that the expectation is given explicitly because we know the, the value should be initial stock because discounted stock is a martingale under the risk neutral measure. However, there is another way you can also look at in, in order to check whether your KC function is implemented correctly. So there is a nice property of KC function. So if we have a definition of KC function phi here of u is given as expectation of e to power i u x t, right? And x t is given as log of our stock time t. What we can do is to, instead of u here, we'll use it minus i. Minus, sorry, it's minus sign, minus i. What we will see is that this KST function on the argument minus i becomes simply expectation of e minus i times i times x t this minus i times i is equal to 1. So we end up with uh, expectation of e to power x t. And now we know from this relation here that this simply is expectation of your stock or discounted stock. So what you can do is actually if we have currency function, from currency function we can simply calculate the moments. So if you have currency function for log stock, we can calculate moments for stock. And this is not only, it doesn't hold only for the first moment, you can actually here use minus i2, or I should write properly, minus 2i, which will be equivalent with the second moment. So if we are able to find out what is the what are the moments of, uh, of our stochastic process, of our stock, we can calculate, for example, using Monte Carlo, or maybe even analytically, then we can confront, we can check whether Cauchy function gives us ex exactly the same moments. If moments are the same, this means Cauchy function is properly implemented, or it suggests that mm, everything is fine there. But if moments from your Cauchy function compared to the ones that you obtain, for example, from Monte Carlo, they are different, then you have a problem with the, you have a bug in your Cauchy function. So those are the sanity checks, simple checks that you can follow in order to improve your um, Fourier transformation. And if you if you see a problem with the convergence, uh, there are other also methods. Those are described more in detail in a lecture and also in a book. See you next time. Bye bye.